This is Great FM. You know, the COVID-19 pandemic shifted our world in many ways. And while some things do return to normal, others have, I think it's safe to say, changed for good. Um, the latter, in fact, can be said for most structures and processes in the workplace. An integral one being the way of working in itself. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Ahalya here. And uh, you're joining in on another podcast on Great FM, the official podcast series by Great HR, where we explore the world of HR and all that's happening there. Coming to today, conversation, while it may be safe for people to return to the office and work face-to-face, hundreds of organizations world over are declaring a hybrid model of work as the new normal. And when the world transitioned into work from home overnight, I will say it definitely took us a minute to find our feet. In fact, HR definitely had their work cut out for them. But a year in, work from home or a hybrid work model has proved to be a very valuable goal to pursue in the long term. And that is kind of what we are exploring today uh, along with the criticisms and drawbacks thrown at the working structure we're also going to be looking at the opportunities that such a work model actually provides and uh, joining us on this podcast today is Megha Gupta currently serving as the HR director of Pfizer Megha has had up to 17 years of experience in HR across industries quite the veteran here and quite the subject matter expert as well she's also been recognized as HR leader by people matters in 2016 as hr 40 under 40 by business world and also most recently the most innovative leader award by the world hrd congress it's a pleasure to have you here megha thank you so much for joining us i would say pleasure is all mine thank you so much for inviting me and you know in doing research for this podcast megha i have to say the arguments of the conversation about this hybrid work model is probably the most controversial thing out there today no one can seem to agree <laughs> on whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, necessary or unnecessary. So I'd actually like to start today's conversation from there. Is the hybrid working model a solution if people are posing it as a solution? Is it a solution for organizations or employees? And as a lead off from that, like when provided as a solution, which group of people should it actually serve? It's a great question, uh, you know, and I'll go back, you know, to when pandemic really happened to all mm-hmm. of us, uh, you know, as a world when it happened, nobody predicted that, you know, pandemic is going to happen. And I still remember going back into that era that, you know, one day suddenly, you know, all the offices were closed. We were expected to work from home. And we always thought after a month, you know, things are going to be normal. Mm -hmm. But the reality is in the two years, the world has completely changed and the thought process has completely changed. And, you know, after two years, it's no more about, I would say, organization thinking about, oh, uh, you know, should we be remotely working? Should it be hybrid? Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's high time when we need to start thinking about what suits for our talent that we hire. Mm. Is talent okay to, you know, completely work out of five days or, you know, is it okay to, you know, have a very, very flexible approach towards it? And the third biggest thing that I always say, you know, hybrid, non-hybrid, completely remote is also with this pandemic, I think we all owe back to the country, to the world, to the society that we, uh, you know, live in. Mm -hmm. And probably remote working has hybrid working is one of the solution of us to give back to our nature uh, whether it's uh, you know saving of electricity saving of water saving of carbon footprint you know even saving people's time of commute mm. that happens due to hybrid i think organizations need to start taking that also into accountability when they're thinking about a return to workplace or a future of the workplace strategy so i would say not just corporates or people but really to the whole and the society as well nice i really like that and it's interesting that you bring up commute and also you know the sustainability priority because what better way to convince people that this is important than to say hey we're actually going to be able to help the environment if we do this and you know you touched upon this the newness of this model is I think freaking people out Megha (laughs) so the question then is is it worth it when we have this comfortable way of working that we've been following for centuries now is it worth it to switch things up What, what, what do you say to that 
let me you know again go back to a historical context you know mm-hmm. if we think about uh, you know the technology evolution or the industrial revolution so called mm-hmm. you know it's no more the era of okay the internet of things the couple of things but we're literally in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution when mm-hmm. technology is come up at a accelerated speed that nobody would have imagined which means you know we are not it in a world where things are going to be constant something that we have seen from the past but right. it's going to be evolution of every single thing and probably workplace is the biggest disruption that has come up due to pandemic and the hybrid piece that has come up because two years people have live it this is a, a very well possibility that people can do so yeah. yes of course it is something that nobody has explored but is it going to be a reality uh, in 2024 uh, you know hybrid is going to be the new way of working it's not going anywhere in fact they say that 73% of the companies will have to adopt hybrid if they don't want uh you know talent to completely go away from uh you know the new age of the talent that's going to come up so yes it's going to be uncomfortable yes we don't know i mean if you ask me do i know what the answers probably we are also exploring i as an hr need to solve for a lot of things mm. uh but as i say change is the only constant thing today and you know you you read my mind i was just going to bring up a forbes article when you spoke about it it you know cited that one of the biggest challenges of the hybrid model will be a lack of definition because i mean i'm guessing with lesser visibility in the traditional sense that you know blurred lines sort of increase a little bit more but do you think it's a viable argument against uh, the structure of work see everything that we do in the business today right there is always a thin line between the right and the wrong mm. now you can always argue to the fact that you know why should you not go back to office because two years ago it was working all fine yes mm. it was working all fine there was no challenge in working five day or a four day kind of a model today you would see multiple countries even exploring four day of work week and i remember when i started my career you know i used to work six days of working today even five days feel like a burnout to people so you know things today that we do uh, you know always are on a challenge that what's the right thing and the wrong thing but the argument today to you know make this happen is also a lot more around that you need people to come together to collaborate and innovate hmm. i think that's what physical proximity really nearly brings in you know when you get two people together i think it's a viable uh, you know argument because it's a win win for organization and the talent you know that you think about uh, from future but having said that mm-hmm. organization yes needs to define what does it mean you know they can't keep it completely open because you know mm. people like structure the reality you know people do like flexibility but people also like some guidance some flexibility around it so of course organization need to define that whether it's related to the cultural aspect how will it's going to work whether it's related to who comes when how do you help that uh, and of course the entire technology behind how does it enable you to function when you are in hybrid versus when you are in the office uh, and of course what's the leadership mindset you know are you even ready to have that conversation because if leader is still going to say that oh i need to have every meeting as a physical meeting mm-hmm. then probably the you know concept is going to fail very fast yeah <laughs> absolutely You're listening to Great FM. I also want to shift focus on the opportunities now. I think we have explored quite a few challenges, but you know, um, interestingly enough, I realized that there was a bit of a link between hybrid working as a model and being able to address the diversity, equity, and inclusion priority. It's interesting how that happens because it just automatically provides more flexibility, more inclusion for the kinds of people that can work at an organization. So could you elaborate on that a little bit? How will the two, you know, converse with each other? 
So, uh, you know, this is something that, you know, touches my heart as a topic because, okay. uh, you know, one of the another reality in the World Economic Forum that talks about is one, the pandemic has not been very, very general neutral. You know, women have mm. been vastly affected by the pandemic because uh, of the kind of jobs, you know, a lot of semi-skilled uh, jobs, you know, have gone away like your restaurant business, your, you know, multiplexes, mm-hmm. uh, where the women were hired a lot more than men and those were the jobs that were severely affected because of the pandemic in fact it's been said that you know uh, because of the pandemic the gender uh, equality pay from 95 years have gone back to 100 and you know 15 plus years which mm. is you know huge that means you've gone back 30 years from you know what you would have made so much progress in the last couple of years yeah now i feel you know, genuinely, you know, and I'll give you some real examples, okay? Mm-hmm. Today, if you have night shift opportunities, uh, till yesterday, if I was a hiring person, I would go back to my business, hey, you know, this business will probably have less amount of, you know, uh, diversity percentage because night shift would obviously not be preferred by a lot of women because of safety challenges in India, right. because of multiple aspects, family issues, societal issues that you may have uh, within the country. Today, imagine if you just make a couple of those jobs, you know, as flexible as you can or probably remote as well, uh, I think you will attract a lot of diverse cha- uh, candidate around that. So that's the first piece, you know, I do want to call out that, you know, earlier where, you know, people would not prefer a kind of a shift you know or a timing now suddenly opens up when you think about you know a hybrid or a remote setup right. second thing you know of course for your new parents whether it's a mother or a father or mm-hmm. you know any any other set of group imagine for them you know if it is flexible you know you can come your time you can go your time or it's three day a week or a two day a week or a remote setup again you know you can bring back a lot of working women or a working set of parent into the workforce third you know because of hybrid today a huge amount of a big community you know lgbtq community that we talk Mm -hmm. about because you know or a physically challenged uh you know person you had to do a lot more around the infrastructure before you could even bring them back to board now if you have a remote setup you know uh, imagine you know it's a lot easier to get that population back to work uh that's another beautiful way to think about how can you bring you know different multiple set of you know diverse set of population in uh, you know into the workforce but i definitely see a huge opportunities for organization to now focus on their dei priority okay all right that was a very comprehensive view of all the opportunities that i think the hybrid working model presents to us and you know speaking of you did touch upon talent acquisition and how it also broadens that horizon um so how do you think this model of work may affect both talent acquisition and i'm even interested in talent retention you know, I'll answer it that way. You know, today organizations, you know, are really struggling for their fundamental existence because, you know, the pandemic has really thought about, okay, what's the sustainable way of sustaining? Cost has become such an imperative thing for every single business because mm-hmm. they've struggled in the last few years when it comes to, you know, really doing what the business should typically do. Mm. Now, in that scenario, if you are the HR head of the organization and say that, you know, hey, I will come back to you with a talent acquisition, you know, I would be able to fulfill 100% of the needs. Uh, and if I tell you that, you know, I can reduce 30% of the cost, which was two years ago, what will the business leader say he will say oh that's magic to my ears so how are you Mm. going to make it happen and I'll just say one thing you know are you open to hire remote people now imagine somebody who's sitting out of Chandigarh or somebody who's sitting out of Nainital you know big MNCs typically have big office corporate structures in the big cities now if you start doing that you know there is a huge amount of untapped talent already sitting into multiple city geography Mm. and you are able to A attract them B they don't have to fund fundamentally shift that means you know their cost to the company is always going to be low now imagine that's like a huge win for the organization that you can start thinking about your talent acquisition strategy so don't think oh you know my selling point is flexible hybrid but think much beyond around how can you save organization a huge amount of cost in the times of where cost is one of the biggest factor for the organization Mm. so I think you know it's the other way around don't wait for the organization to come to the workplace strategy but fuel in these examples where organization can say oh so probably for an ex skill set 
that we should do completely remote because it saves 30% or 40% of our cost now that's a strategy that as a talent acquisition head you define yeah absolutely that is a strategy i like that a lot and you know i think i want to end today's conversation mega on the idea of one do you think this is a sustainable model of work and two can you give us if you were to peg three trends that could really help make this a sustainable model of work what would they be so uh, you know when I, when you say is it a sustainable model i would say last two years we all have been remotely working we all the whole yeah. world was mm-hmm. and if even after two years we ask that you know is work from home possible i think we're fooling ourselves you know it just shows that you know in the change curve we're still you know really back towards saying uh, i don't want to change i think it's just that uh, can all jobs go remotely i don't think so there are jobs that still requires physical proximity there are a lot of technology acceleration happening like in the medical fields i think the maximum technology acceleration is happening because that's the place where you need the most physical proximity So yes things are going to evolve a lot more not every job is possible but i still feel 60 to 80% in today's world are you know some jobs that you can at least do some form of hybrid if not completely remote the second part of your question uh, was around the three best practices now i think the first you know piece that i would say if you're defining your workplace you know strategy mm-hmm. uh, listen to what your people are saying you know gone are the days where leadership used to sit together and you know decide that okay this is what i want to do from tomorrow this is the policy that i want to create yeah. i think it's the time and the era where four generations are working together in one organization mm-hmm. you need to listen to them do a survey do a cloud sourcing of idea what do people want to see in their return to workplace strategy ask them and i'm sure you will get extreme ends where they don't want to come and you'll also see people who are le- really eager to come because as we say there are four personality types mm-hmm. uh, and all those personality types we would find in the organization to listen to people mm-hmm. the second piece that i do want to say is whatever decision that you take around remote you know whether it's 3 day coming back or 4 day coming back or completely remote or it's flexible mm-hmm. whatever you choose you know think about you know how it's going to work and i'm going to call it out you need to solve for culture and technology do you have collaboration enough collaboration tools so that you know when people are even remotely working how they going to connect how they going to solve for simple thing my laptop is broken how are you going to mm. replace that you know how it's going to work out uh, i think you need to fix the broken chain around the technology and the culture now imagine a people manager that you hired you always hired a manager or a leader in the location where teams used to sit mm-hmm. now nobody trained in them to manage a virtual and a hybrid team set competencies think about how you're going to train the leaders and the manager and you know talk about the mindset that tomorrow if the team is going to sit in the goa and just being going to there uh, how you're going to manage that team and still get the productivity out of that so there right. is a huge piece on the culture that you know uh, you know we need to all come together and solve for nobody yeah. have the answers but you need to define that right and the last piece if you are doing some form of hybrid or return to workplace mm-hmm. you know remember you dealing with people you know people you suddenly went into work from home and two years they working from home huh. uh why things are back to normal but not everything is back to normal still people have lost a lot of their you know partners especially when you are in india we know that you know how many deaths really happened in the covid so things have not really exactly the same what it was two years ago yep. so be kind be genuinely empathetic and i would always always say be slow and flexible you know mm. it's not about oh from tomorrow everybody is supposed to go back to xyz model like a three day working or a two day working you know be slow have a flexible and a gradual approach to return to work let's start with tranches of phases that all people will start to come in which means basis your survey that i said in the initial you know people who are genuinely willing super excited to come back make them yeah. come first start secondly people who are you know basis the roles you know who need to come and then you know slowly and gradually you will see a lot more percentage of people will come in and be very very empathetic as i said not everybody situation is going to be same because two years they were remotely working so you know be very very flexible with people and understand what they genuinely need during this time to be able to return back to workplace Yeah, absolutely. I think the last point is one that we do tend to sort of slip up on. 
I think it always comes back down to the essence which is if you have people who are working for your organization with your organization that are happy then the organization is going to be healthy and that is just always at the end of the story absolutely so well, thank you so much uh, Megha for joining us on this edition of Great FM it's really been great <laughs> some very interesting perspectives have come up today and I'm sure our listeners uh, will agree with that so thank you thank you This is Great Defense.